In this problem, we start with two carts, one with a mass of 300 grams and the other with a mass of 415 grams on a level track. We don't have to worry about friction, and we place a light spring between the carts, and it has a constant of 300 newtons per meter, and we're going to compress that spring by 10 centimeters, and then release the carts from rest. So in part A, we're looking for the total energy stored in the spring when it was compressed by 10 centimeters. And then in part B, we're going to use conservation of momentum to figure out the final velocities of these carts. So for the initial energy stored in the spring, I use our formula for spring potential energy, 1 half kx squared. And the compression distance of 10 centimeters has to be converted to meters, so that's 0.1 meters all squared. If we look at the units here, we're going to end up with units of newton meters or joules out of the calculation, so that's good. And when I run the numbers, I get 1.5 joules. The second part of the problem is more involved. I need to find the final speed of each cart after the spring expands. And this is a conservation of momentum problem. In the initial state here, the momentum P initial is equal to zero. And that means in the final state, the total momentum has to be zero. The left cart running away with negative momentum and the right cart with positive momentum. And the way I prefer to set this up is by talking about magnitudes, in other words, speeds instead of signed velocities. So I know my final momentum is zero. And this means the magnitude of the momentum for the left cart has to be equal to that of the right cart. So I have m1 v1 final is equal to m2 v2 final, where those v's refer to the speeds rather than the signed velocities. Plugging in my masses here and converting to kilograms, I have 0.3 v1 final is equal to 0.415 v2 final. So there's the equation that expresses conservation of momentum. And I have two unknowns here, so I'm looking for a second equation. And the second equation is the energy equation. So I have final kinetic energy. That's going to be 1 half m1v1 final squared plus 1 half m2v2 final squared. And energy is not conserved in this problem but I know exactly how much energy goes into the final state. So we're told the spring is light. We don't have to worry about the spring carrying any energy once it's expanded. And that entire one and a half joules is going to go into the combination of kinetic energies of these two masses. So I have the equation 1.5 joules is equal to one half times M1, that's 0.3 kilograms, times V1 final squared, plus a one half M2, that's 0.415, kilograms v2 final squared. So we have a system of two equations and two unknowns and we should be able to solve for the final speeds here. And what I'm going to do is solve for v1 final in that momentum equation. And we can just work in approximations here as long as we keep some extra digits of precision. When I solve for v1 final I get 1.3833 v2 final and this allows me to replace v1 final in the and then we can factor out the v2 final squared and solve for it. So I'm going to multiply by 2 in this energy equation as I go. And I get 3 is equal to 0.3 v1 final squared. And that's 1.3833 v2 final all squared plus a 0.415 v2 final squared. So I can combine those two coefficients of v2 final squared in my calculator. Just don't forget to square that 1.3833 part. And I find that 3 is equal to 0.9891. Again, just keeping a little extra precision, times v2 final squared. So I divide by 0.9891 and square root the result. And this gives me that v2 final, now rounding to three sig figs, is 1.74 meters per second. I then go back to the substitution where I substituted for V1 final. That's 1.3833 times V2 final. And V1 final turns out to be 2.41 meters per second. If you want to check your work in a problem like this, you can just verify that when you take V2 final and multiply by the mass 0.415, you get the same magnitude of momentum as you do when you take V1 final and multiply it by 0.3 kilograms. So the magnitudes of those momentums should be the same. They point in opposite directions, so the total momentum would come out to zero. And as a final check, you can compute one-half mv squared for each of these, add them up, and make sure you get 1.5 joules. And at that point, you can be confident you've got the right answer.
If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.